So, good morning everyone and welcome to episode 5 of the Slingshot Chronicles on the Jester's Lab. Today uh, we're going to talk about, about ammunition. Um, to begin with, you can shoot anything out of a slingshot. It really is, you can shoot whatever you like out of a slingshot. Um, I found through experience that the more uneven the shape of your ammo, um, the more far from round it is, uh, the more inaccurate it is, and also the more it damages your bands and your pouches. So I tend to steer clear of uneven ammo, um, although sometimes I do shoot 10mm and 12mm nuts if I've got nothing around to shoot. So to break down the ammunition groups, um, I could possibly put them in five groups, the first being steel, the second being glass, the third being lead, the fourth being stone, or pebbles, rocks, and the fifth being um, soft. And I'll explain that in a second because not many people talk about soft ammo. So, let's start with steel. Um, depending on the weight of the slingshot that, I, that I'm using, um, I tend to opt for this ammo which is 8mm steel balls as my standard go-to. I've got thousands and thousands of rounds of this stuff and uh, that's what I shoot, say, 80% of the time. Um, if I ever go and compete in slingshot competitions, um, I will be using this ammo because it's the one I am most consistent with. It weighs 2 grams and I shoot it with um, 20 mil to 12 mil tapers, 0.8 mil GZK bands. Right now, if I want to go obviously a wee bit bigger for damage, I shoot these fellows here, which are 10 mil lead. I mean 10 mil steel, slightly bigger. Um, I still shoot them with the same slingshot that I shoot with the eight, but they do get a bit of drop on them. Um, it's raining outside, but I think I'll do some shot demos so you can see what I'm talking about. Just recently, I've started using this ammo. It's not as accurate as round ammo. And what these are, are rollers that I take out of wheel bearings and steering head bearings from motorcycles. Um, they work pretty good as long as they you release them upright from, upright from the pouch. If they, strike to, if they start to tumble when you shoot them, they tend to veer off and you end up with a bunch of flyers. So that's another kind of steel I shoot. I shoot a, the inaccurate ammo, I shoot more for fun because sometimes it gets boring to shoot 8 mil balls and hit everything all the time. So it adds a bit of a challenge. And then if I want to devastate, we've got these ones. These are 16 mil steel balls. I think they weigh about a quarter ounce, about seven grams each one. And whatever you hit with these things, you smash. But you got to use a pretty heavy draw um, slingshot to shoot them. So that's the steel ammo I use. And next we'll move to the glass. Okay, so the glass ammo. If I want to shoot a really, really light slingshot, I use these ones. These are 8mm hyaline glass balls. Um, they're actually the stuff you, they make test tubes out of, I believe. They shatter a bit, but not as much as normal glass marbles. So these ones I shoot with a really light and skinny, skinny rubber, and they're only good for a distance of about 5 meters because then um, when, when your ammo is really light, you shoot it and it goes straight for a while but then just the profile drag of it and all that if it's not perfectly spherical it starts to veer off and you end up with a bunch of flyers so this ammo i only use like to shoot stuff in my backyard especially if i want to shoot paper targets um you don't need a lot of weight to pop a hole in a sheet of paper so i just use these and they don't shatter next i also use these beads over here, 
they're like just glass beads with a hollow in them once again they're not as accurate but if there's nothing around to shoot I just shoot them just a little kids glass beads um, there you go you can see it through there probably that's the best way to show them to you so and then I just shoot the standard you know glass marbles cat size marbles or whatever which are like a 15 millimeter marble they weigh about three and a half four grams um, I like shooting these with if you want to really devastate um, I shoot these with wow that's an odd one I shoot these with heavy rubbers um, that's a really odd marble <laughs> it kind of looks look at that I've never had a marble that shape it's interesting I think I won't shoot this I'll keep it because it's unusual so that covers the glass next we'll go to rocks I don't like shooting irregular rocks but these are the kinds of rocks I shoot they're kind of pebbles that I buy from the dollar store for very little money yeah once again they're not that accurate I try and shoot the rounder ones like this one here you yeah, know that that would be accurate but if you look at this for example because of its irregular shape that'll fly the fun with these rocks is they make the ricochet sound exactly like a gunshot you know they go Ping! so it's kind of fun shooting them especially when they bounce off things the next thing we got here is the softies now I've been known to if I see a cockroach in the house I've been known to actually give it a shot with the slingshot so what I've got here these are you know those orbies you add water to um, and they kind of grow into a big gooey sort of ball well these are big ones of them big orbies if I put this in the water this will go up to about yay big but they're soft they're soft ammunition all right there you go and they don't cause destruction I mean you can shoot them at glass and they won't pop a hole in the glass they're rubbery um, and I use them exclusively for vermin extermination like cockroaches and shit like that that happens to be crawling around that I don't want crawling around and the last option um, if I was a hunter this is what I'd be using to hunt with these are my self-made 11 millimeter balls all right they're actually lead and they weigh a fair bit but because the lead is so dense, such a dense metal you can shoot these out of a pretty small pouch um, I make these myself what I do is I harvest lead whenever I have a battery um, old battery or whatever um, I harvest the lead out of it and when I've got enough to make up a bunch of ammo what I do is I heat it up and I've got myself this which is a fishing mold so what you do is you heat up your lead um, I close this up I heat the mold up as well before I use it because it allows the lead to flow better in it if the mold is cold when you pour the lead in um, it won't run through the whole shebang right I close it up with a G clamp put a G clamp around it and you just pour the lead into this gully over here and it falls into the holes and then when you when it gets cold you split it up and you end up with this herringbone with I believe it's nine ball three six yeah nine balls in each one you just get a pair of side cutters and you cut that 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 and the side ones and cut them between trim all them off and all the extra lead you put back in the pot melt it again and make more ammo out of it um, one word of advice is lead is really toxic when you're doing it doing do it you know when you're melting the lead melt it in a well ventilated area um, don't breathe the shit in because it's bad for you you'll end up with bubble gum lung um, I think that's it as far as ammo is concerned you can only talk about little balls of different material for so long what I might do is I might set up the camera um, point it at the catch box and maybe take a few shots with the different ammo so you can see the different uh, the different trajectories and the different speeds of the of the different ammunitions okay so let's switch over to the next spot okay so what we're gonna do now I've got a light medium and heavy draw slingshot and I'm gonna show you a few shots so you can see them leaving the slingshot the first ammo we're gonna use is those little 
rollers from the Tapo roller bearings. And here we go, we'll shoot it with this one. I'm not always going to hit. As you can see, it comes up pretty fast out of the slingshot. Let's take another shot. Fearless Conrad standing in the way. So yeah, this um, this amount goes pretty good, pretty good. Three misses in a row, and I'm saying this ammo goes pretty good. But anyway, one more shot, and we'll move to the other stuff. All right, those four shots, four misses, quite local, isn't it? Um, okay, so now we're gonna shoot a few shots of the glass high lane. Once again, we're gonna use the light slingshot for that as well. Okay, it's always easier when you can see the ammo going to the catch box because you can actually tell where to aim. There you go. The other stuff wasn't visible, um, so it's really hard to send the scout out and follow it with a with a hit. So as you can see, glass ammo, it moves pretty quick. But once again, it suffers an accuracy because we're about eight meters from the from the catch box here. A few hits. There you go. So. That's our glass. We'll move up a slingshot size now to our normal 0.8 mil, and I'll shoot some 8 mil balls. And as you will see, um, the ammo comes comes up pretty fast. What's happening with me today, but I'm not really hitting that well. <sighs> Once to the left, once to the right. So it should be down the middle this time. Ooh, just touched the can. I don't know why um, I'm not shooting that well this morning. It uh, happens a bit sometimes when you pick up your slingshot and you put it down and pick up another one and put it on. Oh, all right. Here's the reason why we are inaccurate. You see that band there? It's about to snap. That's the reason. What happens is when... The, there you go. Just like I said it would. What happens is when the band gets light, you get an uneven draw and you start pushing to the left and to the right. So that explains the situation with this fella. Let's go to the bigger ammo now, so here's the 12 mil, you can probably see the devastation a bit better. You can even hear the thud inside the, inside the catch box. <laughs> but as you can see the ammo leaves the slingshot much slower speed. You can actually follow it with your eye. Okay, and then we're talking big bombers. These fellas, look how slow they fly out of a slingshot. And that's why I don't really like shooting them. Um, also, when the ammo is a bit big for the pouch, what I do is I actually grab the ammo and twist the pouch like that. Makes no difference to your aim. And as you can see, you can follow it with your naked eye, head into the catch box. It's really slow ammo. And that's why I like shooting .8. I kind of like speedy ammo. OK. OK, so that's all for today. It's a short episode. Um, just want to show you the damage that Slingshot actually does to a can before I finish this video up. So, uh, as you can see, these 
a small ammo damage right there. See it? Actually, you can see the cylindrical shape of the ammo coming out there. This is big ammo damage right there. One, two. Them big fellas pop a good hole in the can, or other ones just put a small rip. So, we'll be talking more um, about ammo, ammo choices in the actual shooting video episode date. So, that's all for today. I might upload, edit and upload this and um, send it up into the ether. And um, I'll be starting on episode 6 soon. I can't remember what episode 6 was about, but uh, you'll find out when it comes out. Thank you for watching. Uh, please like, please subscribe. And I'll see you at the next episode of the Slingshot Chronicles on the Jester's Lab.